Well, this is a series on uh, working with edges uh, in watercolor and uh, some of the ways that we use uh, the media to create soft edges, hard edges, rough edges, lost and found edges. Uh, each one of these requires a little different technique and we're going to explore them uh, in this motif, painting the house that you just saw. Um, only we're going to paint it in the middle of winter, so we're going to evoke our imagination, use that uh, uh, house and road and fence and the trees that were in back as a motif. Uh, but we're going to play with the uh, color, we're going to play with um, falling snow in a later painting, we're going to play with moonlight in another painting, and uh, develop this motif. So I'm using the yellow ochre to kind of uh, give myself a uh, ghost of the image that uh, will be the house and some of the road and some of the other things around it, just so that I have something to see, uh, so that I can preserve the whites that I want to keep. But quickly I move into this strong middle tone using burnt sienna and a cobalt blue. These are the two colors that I'll be using throughout the painting. Uh, some places I'll use a little bit of yellow ochre or a little bit of neutral tint, but almost uh, the whole painting is done with these two colors, burnt sienna and cobalt blue. And what I'm doing now is uh, mixing the colors on the page rather than mix the, mixing them on the palette and creating a, a transition from the warmer tops of the trees to the cooler shadows uh, as they reach the ground or as they reach the house. And I'll let watercolor mix them for me. I don't, I don't blend them that much with the brush. And the paint is quite dry, so I'm able to get some very beautiful dry edges to the tops of the trees. Uh, using rough paper and a dry brush and then as I come down towards the road and the house I can be uh, more deliberate and get some very strong sharp hard edges to the rooftop to the chimneys to the uh, parts of the road to the materials that are in the yard and the truck that's in the yard uh, since we're working on dry paper, basically, I can control those edges with a, with a smaller brush. But in this early stage, I'm using the side of the brush. I'm letting it dry out and fray, all to achieve these broken edges that you see up at the top of the, of the trees. And that gives it a feeling of this diffuse light coming from behind. <laughs> Now I'm using a smaller brush and working on to the architecture of this particular house. And this is one of the appealing parts of the motif. It's the reason I took the photograph and it remains a central part of this composition. Um, and I've gotten to know it quite well after doing several drawings and several paintings of this this house I can almost do it from memory this working from memory or this ability to work uh, from memory or um, is achieved by you know repetition so I have painted this image this house a number of times already and I'm confident that I can get the proportions right this enables me to be more fluid with uh, peripheral things such as the trees or other parts of the composition that allows me to be more imaginative with the color, um, with uh, edges as well. And I really recommend, you know, doing multiples of any one motif because it allows you to internalize uh, the subject and once you internalize it, you can paint it much more freely. I use the analogy of a musician. And when they, they're given a piece of music, they spend a long time memorizing this music. And uh, once they don't need to look at the score anymore, they have it in their body, they have it in their heart. 
and they can put themselves into the music. They can change, play with the dynamics or the um, other parts that go into making uh, the musical composition. And that's what I feel is happening as I'm painting this rendition of this particular uh, homestead in Lincoln. Uh, there was no snow on the ground when I took the photo, but I can imagine what snow would look like. And I can, uh, I can explore that idea with a great deal of freedom. I'm not looking at the image. I'm, I'm bringing out what I think it should look like. And um, it's a very enjoyable way to paint. And I think uh, that the painting becomes more authentic when we're able to completely focus on what's going on in the painting as it's happening, adjusting colors, building contrast, um, letting accidents happen and taking advantage of them. There's a lot of accidents in this painting and uh, I'm just letting them dry as they are. I'm not trying to control them. and. Uh, um, I feel more, I feel this is a much more enjoyable way to paint, at least it is for me. So you can see you know, during all my talking that this painting is starting to uh, take on a finished quality. Um, notice the edge in that front snowbank. I, I started with a, a passage of water, just clean water, and then added that strong blue to obtain that really beautiful soft edge. Um, that defines the kind of height of the snow and the freshness of the snow. It looks like new fallen snow and we create these sorts of edges. And I continue to add uh, smaller details, especially to this main uh, barn, you know, big shadow here from my chimney, some smaller shadows that complement the direction of sunlight as it's falling across the landscape and um, using still those same two colors, burnt sienna, cobalt blue. These were the colors that were used throughout the painting. Sometimes you see some rich grays that are created by those two colors. Other times you see them in a more pure form. I'm adjusting the left side a little bit to allow it to harmonize with the right. And uh, now I'll be uh, putting in the sky color. You can see I'm using a bit of yellow ochre on the right hand side to give a, a more yellowed sky and on the left hand side I'm using more cobalt blue so that we feel a transition across the sky. Both of these colors uh, relate perfectly to what's already been painted. They also allow me to soften some of the edges. If I want to soften some of those edges in the background foliage. I do it while I'm adding this guy. Now, uh, getting into the darker elements of the painting, some of the strong shadows under the eaves, dark windows, darkening, uh, making the chimneys a little darker. And uh, now we're adding the eyebrows and the bags under the eyes <laughs> for our house. And the house really doesn't look finished until you put some sort of windows and, and things into it. So that's what these little whites are doing. They're giving us a feeling of uh, the sills. And we want someone to be at home. So we're putting a little bit of smoke coming out of those chimneys. It's going to, again, add to a feeling of uh, calmness because this smoke is rising straight up. It's not being turned by the wind. It's going to give us a feeling that someone is there inside the home enjoying the fire. It's going to, <clears throat> again, push back against that forested area and uh, create a, a nice atmosphere as it dries. Right now, this smoke is looking a little thick, a little... Um, it's floating on the painting a little bit, but the good thing about this white color is with a little... Uh, diluting with water, it uh, the transparency comes out, and you can we'll be able to see the more of the forest behind, and it'll integrate more positively with the painting. 
few touches of white on the fence posts, some accents here and there. And uh, you can see that this painting is really coming to a conclusion. The edges are multivaried between soft edges and some of the shadowed areas, rough areas, rough passages in the trees above and in some of the um, parts of the building and the boards in front of the building. Uh, even some of the snow has some rough edges to it. So this is the first of the series. Let's go on to the second one.